Okay, so the other day I, I wanted to read about Horace and Seth. Um, mainly I'm researching Horace because as a Christian, I hear so much about how Jesus is a copy of Horace. So I want to learn about Horace and just investigate the claim. Um, I've read uh, about Horace's birth in uh, the Book of the Dead, Hymn to Osiris. It gives his birth story. And, you know, so now I'm like, okay, I already know about his birth story. I can compare it to Christianity. And to me, there's not a, a correlation at all. So, okay, what about him having 12 disciples or being crucified and all this other nonsense? So I go, um, I heard about the whole thing of him losing his eye or, or um, you know, him being persecuted or having to flee, having to do with Seth from sites that they wouldn't, they wouldn't quote where they got it from. They would just say, uh, you know, Horace did this because of said or whatever. So I wanted to find the actual story, read it for myself. So I just Googled Horace and Seth. And as you can see, what tends to pop up is the contendings of Horace and Seth. The death of Osiris and the contest of Horace and Seth, EgyptMythology.org. This one, the contendings of Horace, like that's what you see. The contendings of Horace and Seth. Egyptian myth, the 80-year contention between Horace and Seth. So basically what I tend to do is I'll go to Wikipedia first simply because Wikipedia gives you a whole lot of information. And then I go to other sites to verify what is on Wikipedia because, as most people know, Wikipedia can be edited by almost anyone. So you go to Wikipedia and you see that the, contending, the contendings of Horace and Seth – is in the, the uh, Chester Betty Papyrus. So, you know, I may go here, I may read a little bit about what, the, the, what it is. And the thing about this is, the good thing about Wikipedia is, it'll, as you can see, it'll give you a source for the story, but then it'll also, oftentimes, it'll give you like uh, people's critiques, see, further reading and academic al analysis. And it'll, it'll give you books and things like that. So. This is, you know, obviously, just like YouTube can be a starting point. It should not be research. It's a starting point. So the same thing with Wikipedia. It's a starting point. So now I know that the story is called The Contendings of Horace and Seth. Um, I know it's found in the Chester Biddy Papyrus. So now I know where to look. I'm not going to stay on Wikipedia. I'm going to go to a historic site or something like that and look for it. All right, now that I know what I'm looking for, I'm going to Google it. And a lot of these will be books or they'll be PDF files, which are, they can be annoying to read sometimes. So this one here, this is a book. I don't want a book talking about it. I want, I want it, you know, the contendings of Horace and Seth, a structural interpretation. I don't want an interpretation. I don't want a site that's just going to tell me what the story says. I want to. I want a, a site that's going to post the story. And of course, I don't know. I can't read hieroglyphics. I'm depending on the scholars to uh, translate it in English, just like anyone else. Which is why you find more than one site. But I don't want a site that's going to say, "Hey, I read this, and this is what it means." No, you don't listen when you're researching. You don't just go by what someone else says. You want to read it for yourself. And then you can go back and read someone else's analysis and maybe they have insight or maybe they lie. Who knows? But um, you start off with the original text itself. This is a site I go to, but as you can see, the structure of the words suck. So there's another one, sacred text, that I tend to go to. You know, University of Chicago Journal. It's like, that's usually going to be like a critique or something. WordPress is a blog site. I don't want that. You know, a college. I mean, I want what you want to find is just a site that's easy to read and that just simply posts a story. All right, so Tor Egypt is a site that I go to. The, I tend to use this site because it's easy to read and it's a neutral site. It's not like a Christian site. It's not a Christian article saying, hey, Jesus and Horace isn't the same. It's not a esoteric or whatever or, or pro-conscious, whatever. It, it's a neutral site. It's not a site that's trying to prove anything. It's just stating, uh, it's just giving you the background of the story. It's just telling you the story. 
So that's what I that's what I tend to look for. And it, it's a tour site for Egypt. So what it is is it's like a tour site for Egypt, and you go there and you can learn about, you can see pictures of the land, and you can learn about modern day Egypt, and you can learn about history, just like any other tour site. And that's why I like it because it's a neutral site. Um, if you go here too, actually, they have a whole bunch of uh, documents. As you can see on this site, they have an index of ancient documents. And what I would do is I'll, I'll read these, but then I'll check on another site to see if this is like, if it's an actual document or if this site just made it up or whatever. And these are actual, actual documents. I haven't looked at all of them, but look how many documents there are between the papyrus, the paper writings, and the stone. Look how many writings they have uh, from ancient uh, Egypt. They have a lot. See, him to Osiris, this is the part of the Book of the Dead where you will learn about the birth of Horus. But I already learned about the birth of Horus. I want to learn about his life and his 12 disciples and all of that stuff. So I'm looking for, what was it, the contending of Horus and Osiris? Contending of Horus and Seth, sorry. Contending of Horus and Seth. Now, this is just the text itself. Now, this is, of course, I don't know ancient Egyptian or whatever. So this is supposed to be what the, the, the plates or the paper, I don't, I, the papyrus, it's, it's, in the, it's in the papyrus. So this is uh, supposedly a word-for-word -word translation of what's on the papyrus. So what I did was I read this, and I read it on another site. It was the same. Everywhere I looked, it was the same. So therefore, to me, it's legit. I mean, it could not be, but I'm not looking that far. All right, so there's a lot to read here. I'm just going to highlight. I'm just going to paraphrase and highlight some things. And right here, it just says, "Now it was a young god that was seated in the presence of the universal Lord, claiming the office of his father Osiris, beautiful in his appearances, the son of Ptah." Now this is talking about Horus. Osiris died, so Horus is in his seat. He's the, the next one in line. All right, so uh, they're having some kind of council of the gods. And Shu, the son of Re or Ra, says in the presence of Atum. Atum is the greatest, the creator god in their system. So Shu says, if you look at this to here, it says, Justice is a possessor of power. Administer it by saying, award the office to Horus. So and Thoth, the god of wisdom and stuff, agreed. So Isis let out a loud shriek, rejoicing exceedingly. The beginning of the story, I admit, is not that interesting, but wait, just wait till you get to the, the juicy stuff. So now, um, the, one of the gods, Shu, speaks up and says, give the office of Osiris to Horus, his son. Isis gets happy. The universal lord, a.k.a. Atum, he, he, uh, he gets upset. He gets upset and uh, basically he, he gets upset because up here is, he says, well, you can't see it as under the words. He says, like, like how y'all going to decide this on your own? You didn't even con consult me. I'm the, you know, I'm the mighty God, and you didn't consult me. He gets mad. And then Seth, the son of Newt, says, Have him dismissed outside with me that I may let you see my hands prevail over his hands in the presence of a need, since there is not known any other method of possessing him. So Thoth said to him, Shouldn't we ascertain who is the imposter? It is while Osiris' son... Ho it, it is while Osiris' son Horus is still living that his office is to be awarded to Seth. So it's like, how are you going to just, how are you just going to, you're going to take his office? He, he, you know, he was awarded the office. You're trying to take it from him and he's still alive? Like, what, really? Like, we don't do that. pre became exceedingly furious for Pre's wish was to give the office to Seth, Osiris' brother, the killer of Osiris. He wants the throne, but they gave the throne to Osiris' son Horus instead. All right, I'm going to skip a whole bunch here because it's just like a, a big council or meeting of the gods. They're trying to figure out what to do with Set and, and Horus because they keep fighting. It says here that what shall we do for these two individuals who for 80 years now have been in the tribunal, but neither whom can be judged. So they can't really decide who's right and who's wrong here. 
More political nonsense. Seth, it, Seth decides that, look, I want this office that Horace got, so I'm going to take it. Um, so it says here, thereupon Seth said to Horace, Horace, come, let us both transform ourselves into hippopotamuses and submerge in the deep waters in the midst of the sea. Now, as for the one who shall emerge within the span of three whole months, the office should not be awarded to him. Then they both submerged. And so Isis sat down and wept, saying, Seth has killed Horus, my son. Then she fetched a skein of yarn. And I'm not going to read the rest. Basically, she makes some kind of harpoon thing. And she shoots it into the water where uh, Seth and Horus, in the form of hippos, are underwater, seeing who can stay under there the longest. That's, this, is where it's starting to, this is where it's starting to get interesting. Isis shoots her harpoon, barb, whatever this thing is. She shoots it into the water. She stabs Horus. So Horus is like, ah, mom, you hit me. You know, get this off of me or whatever. Isis, she withdraws her harpoon. She shoots it back in the water again. She hits Seth. Seth is like, yo, what are you doing? My, you, my sister, you know, I'm your, bro I'm your brother. You know, take this. You're hurting me, whatever. She, she, uh, Isis feels sorry for him. She withdraws the harpoon. And if you look at the second uh, paragraph of the highlighted section here, uh, Horus, son of Isis, became furious with his mother. And he went out with his face as fierce as the upper Egyptian's panther, having his cleaver of some kind of weight in his hand. And he cut off his mom's head. All right. Horus got mad that his mom didn't kill Seth and she had mercy, so he cut off his mom's head. The gods get upset at Horus for him killing his mom, take, cutting her head off, and so he went and he ran. Now, as for Horus, he was lying under a Shanusha tree in the land of the oasis. Seth found him, seized hold of him, threw him down upon his back on the mountain, removed his two eyes from their sockets, and buried them on the mountain so as to illumine the earth. The two balls of his eyes became two bulbs, which grew into lotuses. Seth came away and told Preherakti falsely, I did not find Horus, although he had found him. Preherakti is some god, I can't remember who it is, some, some other god. Um, I forgot to mention that if you don't know already, Horus was the sun god. After Osiris, Horus became the, the, the sun. They said that Horus was the sun. He was the physical uh, representation of uh, the, the highest god, Atum. And so this, is, this story is about, I guess, I don't know if he was a man first or whatever, but this is a story of this person, Horus, it's talking about the sun, the person who eventually becomes the sun god who's literally in the sky. And this is why this is relevant. Let's, let's continue. Hathor, another god, finds Horus weeping in the desert. So she put milk on his eyes and healed his eyes. So, wait. Yes, yes. she put some, some milk on his eyes and healed his eyes. Um, the, the council of gods... They, uh, the Council of Gods call Seth and Horus again. They call him back in and say, look, y'all need to be judged. Stop fighting. All right. It says right here, go and obey what I tell you. You should eat and drink so that we may have some peace. Stop quarreling every day on end. Then Seth said to Horus, come, let's make holiday at my house. Horus told him, I'll do so. Surely I'll do so. I'll do so. Now, I'm going to read all of this because this is the meat of the matter right here. <laughs> so <laughs> I know my videos are long, but I'm going to read all of this. So Seth invites Horus over. Let's make peace. Come over. Now start here. Now afterward, at evening time, bed was prepared for both of them and they lay down. But during the night, Seth caused his phallus to become stiff and inserted it between Horus's thighs. Then Horus placed his hands between his thighs and received Seth's semen. Horus went to tell his mother Isis, help me, Isis, my mother. Come and see what Seth has done to me. And he opened his hands and let her see Seth's semen. She let out a loud shriek, seized a copper knife, cut off his hand, hands that were equivalent. And then she fetched some fragrant ointment and applied it to Horus's phallus. She caused it to, <laughs> she caused it to become stiff and inserted it into a pore, and he caused his semen to flow down into it. I'm going to stop right there. Basically, uh, Seth is like, you know what? We're not going to fight anymore. Um, come over. We're just going to have a good time. We're going to be reconciled. 
they're laying down together. They're they're laying down, and they're laying down in the same bed. And Seth causes his penis. Basically, Seth tried to out of the. He tried to. He stuck his penis behind between a horse's thighs, and he was. There's actually something that that's actually something that gay people do sometimes. They they I don't I don't know if they call it thighing or what, but that's something that gay people do. So he stuck his penis between Horace's thighs, bust the nut. Horace captured it in his hand. Basically, it's like so he didn't get pregnant. It didn't go and he stopped it from going inside of him. So he caught it with his hand. He goes to his mom. He's like, Mom, look what Seth did. <laughs> she freaked out, cut off his hands. And she took some fragrant ointment and applied it to Horace's phallus, his penis. And she caused it to become stiff and inserted it into a pore. And he caused the semen to flow down. So she puts something on her son's penis. These are all supposed to be gods. She puts something on her son's penis to make him hard. And then he, he came in a cup. He came in a cup. Now, we're going to read the rest of it. The next paragraph. Isis at morning time went carrying the semen of Horus to the garden of Seth and said to Seth's gardener, what sort of vegetable is it that Seth eats here in your company? So the gardener told her, he doesn't eat any vegetable here in my company except lettuce. And Isis added the semen of Horus onto it. Seth returned according to his daily habit and ate the lettuce, which he regularly ate. Therefore, thereupon he be, get out of here words. Thereupon he became pregnant with the semen of Horus. So, so, so Seth went to tell Horus, come, let us go, let us go, and I may contend with you in the tribunal. Horus told him, I'll do so, I'll do so surely. So, <laughs> so Isis, this godmother of Horus that people say is like the mother Mary, they say that Mary is a copy of Isis, and Horus is a copy of Jesus. That's what people claim. So that's why I'm here reading this to see, okay, well, what, things in their lives that maybe parallel them that people were saying. I want to, I want to see this. Um, so Isis gets Horus' semen, puts it on some cabbage. Seth eats it and gets pregnant with Horus's seed. Again, these are supposed to be gods, right? Uh, I'm going to continue reading this because this is juicy stuff here. They both went to the tribunal and stood in the presence of the great Ani, which is like the council of gods. They were told, speak concerning yourselves. Said Seth, let me be awarded the office of ruler. For as for Horus, the one who is standing trial, I have performed the labor of a male against him. The Ani let out a loud cry. They spewed and, th and spat at Horus's face. So Seth is like, he's not qualified to be a leader. I, I put my thing in him. And now, do you remember how a couple of days ago in our group, someone said that homosexuality is not from Africa. It's not native to Africa. It's a Christian thing. It's a European thing. But then you look and you read the actual scriptures of the Egyptians and their very gods are getting male gods are getting each other knocked up or trying to get each other knocked up. This is why I say you got to read the stuff for yourself. Stop listening to memes and read what people say. This is in, this is ridiculous. We ain't even done yet. I just wanted to point that out. They spewed and spat at Horus's face. Horus laughed at them. Horus then took an oath by God as follows. All that Seth has said is false. Let Seth's semen be summoned that we may see from where it answers. And my own be summoned that we may see from where it answers. Then Thoth, Lord of Script and Scribe of Truth for the Anid put his hand on Horus's shoulder and said, Come out, you semen of Seth. And it answered him from the water in the interior of the marsh. <laughs> Thoth <laughs> puts his hand on Seth's shoulder and said, Come out, you semen of Horus. And then it said to him, Where shall I come from? This is the semen talking. The semen is talking. <sighs> Thoth said to it, Come out from, from his ear. Thereupon it said to him, Is it from his ear that I should issue forth, seeing that I am divine seed? <laughs> then Soph said to it, come out from the top of his head. And it emerged as a golden solar disc upon Seth's head. 
Seth became exceedingly furious and extended his hand to seize the, gold, the solar disk. Thoth took it away from him and placed it as a crown upon his own head. <laughs> then the Aeneid said, Horus is right and Seth is wrong. Look, look at this nonsense. Just, just, just look. So Horus, the sun god who, well, at this point, he's not the sun god, which raises a question because this says that they were battling. They were fighting for this throne for 80 years. So if Osiris was the sun god and he died and Horus was supposed to be the sun god, but he's fighting for the throne, doing all of this stuff for 80 years, then who's who's the sun? It doesn't make whatever. I don't know how the sun, the sun's supposed to be the God, but the God is sitting here making other men pregnant. So I don't know. Remember, this is the Horus. They say that Horus's life is a copy of G. They say Jesus is a, a copy of Horus. So this, whatever, let's finish reading. So Seth lost because he was pregnant with the divine seed of Horus now, Seth is a male. Seth is a male god. He has a phallus. He has a penis. So Seth is pregnant, and um, he loses the crown. The, the gods say, you're disqualified. So he gets mad. He comes up with this plan. He says, um, I don't know why they let him do this, but he comes up with this plan. He says, um, he shall not be awarded the office until he has been dismissed outside with me, and we build for ourselves some stone ships and race each other. Now, as for the one who shall prevail over his rival, he is to be awarded the ruler, the office of ruler. Then Horus built for himself a boat of pine, plastered over with gypsum, and launched, launched it into the water at evening time without anybody who was in the entire land having observed it. Seth saw Horus's boat and thought it was of stone, and he went to the mountain, <laughs> cut off the mountaintop, and built for himself. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Man, my bad. You already know what's going to happen. And he went to the mountain, <laughs> cut off a mountaintop, and built for himself a boat of stone of 138 cubits. That is humongous. Humongous. A cubit is a, a cubit is basically the size from your elbow to like your whole side. The length of your forearm is a cubit. So they embarked upon their ships in the presence of the Aeneid, and <laughs> Seth's boat sank in the water. <laughs> then Seth's boat sank in the water. <laughs> Seth's <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having the hardest time not laughing. Seth's boat sank in the water, so he, Seth turned himself into a hippopotamus and scuttled Horus's boat. Horus took his copper harpoon and hurled it at the person of Seth. Then the Aeneid told him, don't hurl it at him. So the, the council of the, I laughed myself into tears. So the council of the, the gods, they finally make a decree. And God, uh, the, Thoth, the god of writing and medicine and wisdom, I tell him the universal, universal Lord told Thoth, sit down and compose a letter to Osiris that we may learn what he has to say. <clears throat> Thoth sat down to fill out a letter to Osiris with the words, Bull, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Bull, the lion who hunts for himself, the two ladies, protecting the gods and subduing the two lands. Horus of God, who invented mankind in primeval time, the king of upper and lower Egypt, Bull in the middle of Heliopolis, son of Ptah, most glorious of the two banks, appearing as father of the Aeneid while he eats of gold and glaze, the possessor of sanctity. <clears throat> Please write for us what we should do for Horus and Seth so that we should not exercise our authority ignorantly. So <clears throat> this is strange because Osiris was killed by Seth. Set or Seth, Seth, same person. Osiris was killed by him. He was re revived by Isis in the form of a bird. And the bird Isis slash his sister wife gets pregnant with Horus. And then after that, Osiris dies and becomes the lord of the underworld. So they're sending a letter to the underworld. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're sending a letter to the underworld to write him, which basically would be our equivalent, the Christian, I guess, equivalent 
of hell. <clears throat> so he's like running hell. It's of course it's probably a little different in our culture, but that's as a Christian, that's the way I would look at it. It's, it's hell. He's in hell. Okay, basically this is the end of the story. It's just telling like of the legal ritual, or whatever. Seth Seth challenged Horace one more time and Horace won. It doesn't say how he did it. And um Seth ends up taking the place of his father as the sun god. And this is just kind of the end of it. And I don't really know what else to point out here. This is the end of the story. So Horus was born when the goddess Isis took the form of a bird. Gathered. Matter of fact, I'm just going to show you. All right, so this is the hymn to Osiris and the legend of the origin of Horus. And the Book of the Dead is called the hymn to Osiris and, uh, well, yeah, it's just called the hymn to Osiris. So I'm going to read just the birth of Horus here because I want y'all not only to, to know the kind of nonsense, um, because people are deceiving y'all. People are telling y'all something that's not true, and it, it's wrong. Thy sister Isis acted as a protectress to thee. She drove thy enemies away. She averted seasons of calamity from thee. She recited the word or formula with the magic power of her mouth, being skilled of tongue and never halting for a word, being perfect in, perfect in command and word. Isis, ow. Oh. <coughs> Isis, the magician, avenged her brother. She went out seeking for him untiringly. <clears throat> She flew round and round this earth over this earth, uttering wails of wailing cries of grief, and she did not alight on the ground until she had found him. She made light to come forth from her feathers. She made air to come into being by means of her two wings. She cried out the death cries for her brother. She made to rise up the helpless members of him whose heart was at rest, meaning he was dead. She found him. She got his members together, and he's dead. So she revived him. She drew from him his essence, and she made therefrom an heir. <clears throat> she got pregnant. She suckled the child in solitariness, and none knew where his place was, and he grew in strength. His hand is mighty within the house of Keb, and the company of gods rejoiced greatly at the coming of Horus, the son of Osiris, whose heart is firmly established, the triumphant one, the son of Isis, the flesh and bone of Osiris. So when you see people post memes saying that Horus was born of a virgin, and um, just like just like Jesus, Horus was born of a virgin like Jesus and all of that stuff. This is what the scripture says. A bird got pregnant by a, a well, I call I say a zombie, but she a bird got a bird goddess used magic to revive her dead brother slash husband and get pregnant by him. And she took the child and she she hid so that nobody would kill him until he became a mighty warrior or, or until Set started chasing him or something. It says the flesh and bone of flesh and bone of Osiris. So how is it a virgin birth? Other uh other uh versions of the story, she made a golden dildo, which is why when people they see this what I'm saying, they post memes saying that uh that Jesus and Horus, they both had 12 disciples, they both were crucified and all of this nonsense. But when you read the actual text, it says nothing of the sort. That's why y'all need to stop just listening to what people say and actually read the text for yourself. But <clears throat> Horus, so Horus was born when the, the, the bird woman, and if you look at the hieroglyphs of Isis, she's a woman with like bird, she has bird wings or feathers on her hands. That's why, why do you think, and you look up Horus, he has a bird head and a man body because he was born from a bird and a man. All right, so <clears throat> Horus was born when a bird got pregnant by a man. Um, and then when he was ready to take his throne, he turned himself into a hippopotamus to uh, win a contest. And then he was supposed to make a boat out of stone and race somebody. And he lied and cheated. <laughs> he made his boat out of wood and the other Seth, like an idiot, made his boat out of stone and the joint sank. Um, then he cut off his mother's head. Oh, that was before. He, he, oh, that was after. He cut off his mother's head, had his eyes gouged out. Let, uh, he let another man stick his penis between his thighs and bust a nut. 
He caught the nut with his hand. Then he he used his own semen and he put his semen on a cabbage or lettuce or something. He put his uh, his his semen on some vegetables and got another man pregnant. And then after all of that, after 80 years of fighting, he be- he became the sun god. And this is the pe- person that y'all say is Jesus is a copy of. Y'all need to learn how to read for yourself. This stuff is bizarre. This is bizarre. I don't really know what else to say. This is, I understand, you, you know, y'all hate Christianity and y'all think it's whatever. I understand it. You don't, I understand it. But be honest. You got to understand that you just, just look at, just look. People lie. People lie. Don't just believe what people say. Do some freaking research for yourself.